Benny Lee and myself were coming back from Elm Street and we had a small studio that was uh, an ex-biscuit factory in Kensal Road. I mean, that was quite a, a studio on its own, a so-called studio. And there was a sign outside the big up in the hall and it's like, for sale. And Benny said, has nobody bought that yet? He said, turn around. And so, so we come down Thornton Road here. The gates were uh, open at the back, so we pulled up and we come through the back. And I mean, it's like deja vu. I mean, you, these are the first two studios that we, we came in. It was all dark and we were looking around thinking, God, look at the height. He said, God, what do you think it cost this place? <laughs> I said, I've not got a clue, Benny. I said, but look at a mess of it. It had been derelict. It was, it was wrecked by uh, the Scottish football supporters one, one night when they beat England. And it was just a mess everywhere. But what Benny was struck with is the stages. Then we found out there was another E stage at the back here. And uh, so, right, he said, come on, let's go. So off we went back to Kensal Road and he's on the phone straight away. Well, I'll cut a long story short. We bought it, I think that was 77. We bought it by the end of the year and then we moved in. And Gary was 16 years of age. Yeah. He was an assistant at. Uh, I was Dennis's, brought in as Dennis's assistant at, at Kensal Road, uh, which was, was, a, was a fantastic place. And also, we've got a history of, of big movies out of what was an ex biscuit factory. Uh, I came on board with Dennis at the age of 16. I uh, spent a bit of time at Kensal Road, then it was one mass exodus from the move from Kensal Road over to Wembley, which was a, this, it was a complete and utter shell. But we had to take out something like a hundred lorry loads of glass and, you know, breakages, but we brought the generators up over, swept it up, everything was portable and uh, inside about a month we were we were in business while we then negotiated uh, and plan how we're going to put it back to a film studio, which subsequently uh, we did inside a year. We had what movie? Yeah, show? I mean, but the first we did, the first the first film we did was um, a TV film with uh, which was directed by George Cuker and starred Catherine Hepburn and Toya Wilcox. Corners Green. It's called The Corners Green. Mm -hmm. Um, we were halfway through renovating the studios and we had a, we'd had by then a commitment of a film coming into the studio um, and it was we, we'd had painters, we'd had electricians, for Lee Lighting electricians painting corridors, we had glass people <coughs> putting all the windows back, we had plumbers everywhere, if you, stood if you stood still long enough you'd get painted. It was one big rush to, uh, all of a sudden to get um, everything ready, including the stages and dressing rooms for George Cuke and Catherine Hepburn and this film that we've now committed to. You can imagine, um, it was, uh, <coughs> it was good, like, you know, fun. to have George Kikori as like the uh, director from the States and Katie, Catherine Hepburn. And when I was an electrician working as a, a, on the films, I was online in winter and I remember her from there. She was an absolute angel. And they came yeah. through the door and we yeah. was like, would you like to see the studio? And we're walking through the cafeteria, which is like the cafeteria now. No, she said, sit us down here, get us some tea. We're two geriatrics. We've seen all the studios. Just make sure the dressing room's nice and white and it's got a makeup mirror. Oh, and a bathroom. Mm. And yeah. that was it. <laughs> and she was a charm. She was wonderful. She was really wonderful, yeah. And, um, and the sets were built and uh, the film went ahead successfully, which was produced by a guy called Neil Hartley, who also was, had uh, a company at the time with, uh, with Catherine Hepburn. And, and the next big um, one, I suppose, was the and Elephant then, Man. And then it was Quadrophenia, oh, I think, the, Oh memory, yeah, that's right, and then Elephant Man. Yeah. Which was directed by Frank Rodden. Um, and starred Sting and Phil Daniels and Sarah Wilcox. Lots of that was I think Sarah Toya Wilcox yeah. was also yeah. in that as well. Yeah. That was shot in Brighton, uh, different parts of location in London, and a lot of lot of the scenes on this stage. On this, this so this is this is stage B, B stage. Um, was the big party scenes, and um, um, it was then when sort of coming towards the end end of the film. Um, 
We had lots of mods and rockers in, <laughs> um, and a lot of extras, and uh, there was bit of drinking going on during the day, a lot of filming, it was very busy, the place was packed out and they were allocated all the dressing rooms that are now your dressing rooms along the side of the stages here. And on one particular evening, it was a Friday evening, uh, a guy called um, uh, Ray Corbett was the first assistant director, called a rap and everybody left and on the way out every single dressing room was smashed to pieces. Um, they'd, the had a, they'd had a riot in there. <laughs> um, sinks were broken. There was stuff up the wall. Took us back to seventy seven. It did. <laughs> it did. So that so mm. that weekend was a, was a massive yeah. carpet clean, carpet changes, but repaint. We did have other, we did have um, nicer stories. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it, but it was it was a rush to get it ready, all back to to normal, ready back for Monday. You know, that's how that's mm. how it was. You know, and it was continuously busy. It was very very rarely that we've had any any downtime on these stages of any length of time whatsoever. I mean your reception has been the dressing room for Barbara Streisland, John Hurt, uh, Catherine Hepburn, Catherine Hepburn. Mm, Tony I mean all Curtis. the Tony Curtis in the insignificant and all the main uh, all the main stars uh, and it's it's been an unbelievable place that the, the the artists that have come through this door. Mm, and directors and, and, yeah. uh, and uh, De Niro, know. was he in Brazil? I Brazil. mean, it's, oh. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's uh, yeah. fantastic. So John Gilgood, uh, Anthony Hopkins, you say, John Hurt, um, uh, Peter Ustinov, oh, Sarah what movie Miles, was that? That Diana was, Rigg. What movie um, was that? That was Evil, was Under, Evil the Sun. Under the Sun. It was directed by, I think to my head, it was Guy Hamilton that directed it. We had a dozen artists, Peter Eustonoff and uh, James Mason, Mason and Roddy uh, McDowell. Right? And they were all in these dressing rooms that, that you you've got. Like, now. You can imagine putting it, that, that we've got 12 artists at any one time and they all want the star dressing room. <laughs> and <laughs> it was a nightmare. Sarah Miles, I don't know if you ever heard of Sarah Miles. She, she's a, she was a big American actress. Big American actress and a big bosom lady and uh, she's screaming and shouting and I said Gary go down and see what she wants uh, Gary goes in and first of all she kicks off with the flowers gone you finish yeah, the story she, um, she said well first of all what do I owe the pleasure of this so as I walked in the door she said if there's anything I can get you some, some clean towels I think why is her flower arrangement bigger than my arrangement? And That's she Maggie was Smith. <laughs> she was referring to Diana Rigg. Oh, Diana Rigg. Was um, she had a slightly different arrangement of flowers. You have to bring them in every couple of days. And, uh, and uh, she'd, I think she'd made it uh, a regular thing when she was in. She'd, she'd pop her head into each or the other uh, fellow cast members and just looked at the size, gauge the size of the, <laughs> the flower arrangements and the fruit and the, and the, and the How about newspapers. The loop, she didn't have a loo, did she? Uh, she didn't have to. She, it was a shared loo because it was two <laughs> dressing rooms, which um, I think in the end we, we, we ended up moving out, or the producer moved it to, to another dressing room. But she, every morning she, she would tend to look into other people's rooms just to make sure they hadn't got a little bit more than her. Well, but yeah. um, um, she could be, she, she was um, actually but it was quite, a, she was quite a nice funny, lady. Uh, we, um, had a little, we had a little uh, <coughs> restaurant, executive restaurant, it's about 20 seats. And so uh, the first week, they're up there ordering this and that, all the artists. And Peter used, used, enough, used to sit there sketching it, sketching people, the waiters, the people that come in on the, the serviettes. I mean, I wish that, I mean, every unbelievable, <coughs> lovely man. So after a week, we submit the bill for all the artists for their <laughs> lunch. <So> the production <laughs> manager says, we're not paying for that. They pay themselves. So anyway, we gave them the bills and they're not paying on it. <laughs> so from that week onwards, there's only one person that ever went back to the restaurant. That was Peter Eustonoff, who duly paid his bill. Not only didn't we get paid, but they never went in there again. <laughs> <laughs> but they did sign the wall. They did sign so, the wall. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it was... Um, but we, uh, I mean, uh, you know, we've, what's, 10 years here? 10, yeah. 10 years, and... We, we had it three years, and <coughs> we had it three or four years, and then we bought Shepperton Studios. 
Then we bought a, <coughs> and this, the reason it worked for us, the TV studio, is because we had Lee light in here, we had Lee filters here, we had a, a camera operation here, and it was the base for all the electricians and their maintenance and everything. But they, Lee Lighting grew like mad. It was one of the biggest lighting company in the world. So we had to buy somewhere for them, which we did, Julie, in uh, Ledbrook Road. But unfortunately, this studio couldn't exist on the income of the studio alone because the other companies had moved out because they were expanded. So that was the only reason that uh, we left. And then we, we the studio, uh, <coughs> we, we moved to Shepparton and... Uh, mm. Eventually left, we eventually left the uh, studio here in, in June 1989. So exactly 10 years. And through those 10 years, uh, from what I can remember, we're up to about 35 big feature films. That's not counting all the um, well-known uh, campaigns for BT when they first came out in the 80s with Maureen Lippmann. Um, it's a company called, um, used to give us a, repeat, a, a very well-known production company called James Garrett and Partners that were in practically every other couple of weeks. They just, uh, I think it was Abbott Mead Vickers was the uh, advertising agency at the time. Garrett's had just taken on a huge campaign for BT, as I say, start with starred Maureen Lippmann. And those were directed by Richard Longcrane, who subsequently directed The Missionary and lots of other, lots of other films. But Ridley and Scott came here in between his yeah. movies, Alan Parker yeah. came here. I mean, because what the beauty of this place, and I'm sure it's, is it's so close to London. And you haven't got to worry about the crowds and them bussing mm. them in. They mm. get on the tube and they're right there. And that was all of it. It was all the location. It was absolutely perfect. And Brazil was with, with Jonathan Price and Kim Greist, and uh, I think it was John Gilgood uh, on Brazil. And De Niro, was De Niro? Um, yeah, De Niro was yes, over there. Yes, 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 he was on yes, there. Yes, he was, yeah. yeah. And, um, those sets were fantastic, and um, the supreme being was Sir John Gilgood in, in, yeah. in, in, in Brazil. And they, they had these guys dressed with these big white angel wings that would be flying across the stove. And Terry Gilliam would come in one morning and said, I had this fantastic dream last night. It should <laughs> be like this, and so we need to change this and change that. The colour of that needs to be changed, and we need to put something there, something there. And uh, all the construction managers and all the crew, they, they were all... Everybody knew each other, and uh, it was just a very warm atmosphere, friendly. Everybody loved it. It was it was a great atmosphere, and Terry was friendly with everybody. He was the nicest guy you could, you could by ever wish to work with. You know, he was so and good. And he was with always laughing and jolly, yeah. and he'd have these fantastic ideas. And suddenly, come in the morning, everything would change because he'd had this dream, and that it needed to be that needed to be there, and that needed to be there, and all that. And it all happened very quickly, and. Uh, yeah, it was just, just fond memories and everything slowly came together you know, and the studio started to thrive. So, uh, straight after Corner's Green we were into Quadrophenia, then we were into The Professionals, then we were into The Awakening with Charlton Heston and it was one after another and in between the films we had commercials. Uh, the commercials in the, in the 1980s was absolutely thriving. Um, there must have been a couple of hundred top production companies in the West End then and commercials was a big part of our business. Um, TV commercials in between the films, you know. Um. As you can gather, Gary hated moving. He hung it out. He must have been here three years after I'd left to go to Shepparton and trying to get him over. It, he it loved the place, didn't well, he? Well, Dennis, uh, Dennis had bought, uh, Den the John and Benny Lee bought Shepparton in 1984, which is when I'd been uh, promoted up to studio manager in 1984. Prior to that, I was Dennis's assistant, um, so I was studio manager. Dennis had to concentrate on running Shepparton and left Wembley to me, um, really to look after for, for 44, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, for five years. Um, we had an they exit. Were, they were challenging yeah. years, I have We to had say. an ex exit date. But Gary kept booking, booking right <laughs> up to this exit Yeah, I day. couldn't resist. The Even the guy, who was the, who was the guy from... Uh, he was taken out. Are you going to leave, Gary? Yeah, no, I know. And But um, th though the last five years were, were quite challenging because Lee Lighting had obviously gone to another premises. Dennis and the brothers had bought Shepparton. We still had Wembley at the time. Joe Dunton Cameras had bought an old London Weekend studio down in Stonebridge. So they'd gone. So the <laughs> whole place for five years, which was challenging because 
we also had to make the numbers work because now that everybody had left, we were responsible, the studio for the was entire site for and all the rest of the whole yeah. of the overheads. And, and I might it was very say, expensive. Gary, you did a fantastic job. I well, mean, it's, we all uh, worked very hard. I had very good training, by the way. I'm oh, currently the studio manager of Evo <laughs> Studios. Um, I, I had think it's time to take a night. Exchange, very, good, <laughs> very, very good training. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, and then finally, we, you know, it was very sad for us. We closed the doors on the 24th of June, 1989, and handed over to Limehouse. Ah, oh, Jimmy Bricknell. He was the bright, uh, <laughs> lovely Jimmy Bro. He arrived as soon as we over, uh, as soon as we bought it. We mm. was we was over, there. and Jim arrived with uh, our construction manager Les Tabra. And what I didn't know then, uh, Jimmy used to work as a ganger for Les when when Les ran a, a big biggest construction company. So, and not only that, he was the brother-in-law, and they were both about the same size. And, uh, and you didn't argue too, too much with him after lunch, especially uh, mm. Les. Yeah. Jimmy was the more, Jimmy always had a smile on his face and, and, Les, it, yeah. and Les, he had an argument with Les. Uh, but he was there morning and night, he anything was. you wanted done. And I knew it, Les was uh, a bit fiery, so I used, we used to go to Jimmy to get things done and mm. Jimmy had sorted out. But yeah. he took charge of the boilers and uh, apart from one day when... Uh, they broke down and I rushed in there. What's up with it? I don't know. He said, it's, I think his fuel pipe is gone. I said, well, you've got to do something. I said, Sean Connery's going mad. He's covered in crap and he wants a... a <laughs> he said, well, he won't go to here. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he <laughs> Lovely was, man. He was a Absolutely. great guy. And once he, again, he, he, I mean, you know, quite often he'd stay overnight. If we were shooting late, he'd have to keep the things, the boilers going. And, you know, quite often he'd stay, which obviously didn't go down too well with his wife. Um, f from time to time, they'd have a they'd have a fallout, but um, we'd know when Jim had had a fallen out at home, is when he used to have a little room at the side there, which is no longer there um, for himself. So there was like a locker type room. He had a cooker there. Um, w when he wasn't spending time at home, he used to make these massive, great big stews. <laughs> he used to call them five day stews, and he when he wasn't at home because he'd been temporary. So now, temporarily. And uh, we, knew, we always knew when that happened with these five day stews. And everybody would go in there from associate producers, to, uh, production accountants, financial controllers, assistant directors would go into Jimmy's little room. Thrown out again, Jim? Lunchtime, That's what they said. At lunchtime and have a bowl of <laughs> Jimmy stew uh, mm. at, at lunchtime. Um, but um, he, uh, he worked extremely hard. He knew this place um, not the back of his hand. He, 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 if you if you'd ask to show him if there was a problem with the boiler um, or something, he knew what to tap and what to turn. Um, but From he made sure he, yeah. he knew it, yeah. but nobody else knew it. But somebody so that had no uh, learning in boilers. No. My God, did he pick it he up? He picked quick. it up. He was no really boiler quick. engineer. And he, he was not. But my God, and did he, he did a good job. And he, he knew when to get on the phone and, uh, you know, if they couldn't talk him through, uh, yeah. they'd be down. But no, lovely man. Absolute lovely man. Yeah, he was. He was for really good. Now, all through the year, all for, for the whole period until he was taken over. I think he, when we left, he stayed on to, 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 to join Limehouse and then obviously followed on with you guys. So, um, his, you know, his... If he was here years. today, he'd probably join the, uh, <coughs> the property company's part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very fond memories of, uh, of Jim. Yeah, mm. great guy, great guy. Oh, it's, it's a sad day because it's got, I mean, uh, as Gary was saying earlier, the latter part of the building, which is no longer there, it, it is with 20th Century Fox mm. uh, films that the, uh, and it was mainly the uh, documentaries and news. They used to keep all their teams there. I mean, when we picked it up in, um, you know, the early 80s, we had the older cameraman come as a, I was a young boy here, being sent out to, you know, on patty news and stuff. And it, it is a shame, but it's life, isn't it? I mean, it's, uh, you know. But coming, coming for me, coming back here after 27 years, since we closed it, it's the first time we've been back since 1989. You know, you sit back and you look and you reflect on uh, what was probably the best, one of the best 10 years of my working career 
here, when you walk through those doors off that high street, it was like walking into a different world. It was a big family atmosphere. Everybody worked very hard. Everybody, all the clients and the artists, and everybody just loved it here. Uh, and everybody, you know. Um, and the, the, the film industry was a very tight knit unit. You see lots of people coming from production to production and, you know, and good, lovely, friendly people. Uh, even the, the girls behind the counter in the mm. cafeteria. I mean, absolutely. Full characters. Of Everybody was nonsense. Char was a character. Everybody was, um, w was a character, really. E you know, it, it, was, it, was, um, it was quite unique. You'd never get those days back again. And it's truly, it's truly sad that it's eventually, eventually going now. It had lots of fond memories here, as, as I say. A good, te every, a lot of made a lot of people happy for ten years here, and the business and the life lead business isn't that grew. Bad, Gary, at Ealing? No, it's not. Life is <laughs> life is very good at Ealing. I went on to Shepperton <laughs> in '89 and became commercials manager, and uh, was at <laughs> Prime with Shepperton through through the Panavision days, then it was the Bank days, then it was Ridley and Tony days, and then Pinewood bought it, um, and I was there for a while through the Pinewood days for, for, for a number of years up until nine years ago which is when I joined Ealing Studios nine years ago. And he's kept that full ever since. Changed and it round. Literally he has um, changed it round. I've got to admire. I mean we've it's a different studio and he's just taken that Lee thing as we call it you know which which is like the film is you know it's not Lee Lee but that's the way we operated and Gary took that to Ealing and that place has not stopped. Well, what has helped I think with the business that I run today is the contacts. Over 40 years, you build up a big contact, and I've been extremely lucky uh, in my career that I've had a, a, a good, loyal following of people that I've known since we were runners that are now high-end drama producers. Yeah, that's true. Um, a lot of them are big producers and and, and directors, and uh, we still talk, we still get on, and I like to think that Ealing, I have a very good and always had a good relationship with Tim and Eric. From working who own working title um we've got three films with them at the moment we have repeat business from them and it's people i've known for years through this studio basically um uh, and uh, we, and i've had a, a very loyal following and ealing was probably running it uh, on the stages at about 45 45 percent occupancy 50 percent occupancy at one point and i joined nine years ago we're now up to about 95% occupancy mm. Not on the whole site. Yeah, and that is a, l a lot of it is down to the contacts that I made here at Wembley during the 80s, the early 70s and the 80s, who were then runners like myself, uh, who are now producers of, of Downton Abbey, uh, producers of the Durrells, uh, big high-end dramas, big feature films. Who were runners and then, but are, now, but are now producing and, directors, and directing yeah. films yeah. at Ealing as we speak. So it's been it's been great, and I'm sad to see this eventually go. It's a sad time.